Hi everyone, it's Penny. I'm back today working in a fairly new journal I got. Um, I was turned on to this type of journal by Robin McClendon on YouTube and she got these at Walmart and I finally found it. It was actually in the office supply section. Journals can be in like three places, in school supplies, craft and art supplies, and in the office supply section. And I finally found this in the office supply section. And what I like about it is that the, um, well, first of all, the price, I mean, it's less than $4. And the pages are this really pretty golden manila color. And so I thought that would be really interesting to work on that because I can either cover it up like I'm doing with a lot of it here with my mixed media and collage material. Um, but I've done some pages where I didn't cover up hardly anything at all and let that beautiful color show through. Now, it's not the most substantial of papers. It's not like working in watercolor and a little bit of water is going to make it buckle, but that's okay with me. And if it buckles, then the next page, I might just glue it to that next page since they're, you know, a little bit thinner and make a little bit more substantial page if it does buckle. So it's not that big a deal. So what I'm doing here is I've just laid down, like I often do, just collage material to get started. Just tear pieces of paper that I have on hand, lay them around the page, glue them down with my trusty yu glue stick, and then I start sketching a face um, over top. And sometimes I use the movement of the papers to dictate where and how I sketch and what I sketch. And sometimes, like this one, I'm just sticking it on there. And I will use paint to cover up the papers that are there. And so this is just going to be just a very simple girl out of my head. I don't believe I used any type of reference photo for her. Um, I just wanted to see what this journal page would do, what this type of paper was capable of. So I start off with um, a few acrylic paints on my palette down here that you can see on the right. And I'm going to use a dry brush. <clears throat> And I don't want to put, when you're working with paper that is not a watercolor paper or, I didn't want to put a coat of gesso on this paper because I wanted that pretty golden color to show through. So I don't want to put a lot of water on my brush. So I'm just doing a dry brush technique with acrylic paint. And I add colors to it as I go and blend right on the page. Sometimes I blend on my palette. I just play. I keep it loose, kind of a painterly style. So I find doing figures in a looser style keeps me from getting too ugh, just stressed out and running the risk of overworking a piece. And that is very easy to do. And on this type of paper, it can really cause damage to the paper if you try to overwork it. So I keep a dry brush. I keep going into different colors, painting it on, not trying to make everything blend just perfectly. And so that is the, my method, my MO for doing this page. Now my paints that I'm using here are a blend of just craft store type paints and some Jane Davenport paint. So I use various shades of uh, yellow, cream, pale pink, tan, and some of the darker brown. The tan and the darker brown are from Jane Davenport's acrylics. And I just like hers. I find them easy to use. They come out of the tube pretty well. I've only had like one incident where it just kind of plopped out of the tube and onto my page where I didn't want it. Um, but normally they're very easy to handle and very easy to get exactly the amount you want on your palette um, without getting too much, which is what I like. So I'm just putting all of this in. You see there I have to, once in a while I get a stray bristle and it's just not going to go back in with all the others at that point. So I just cut it off so it doesn't leave any weird lines anywhere. So I'll start putting in my darker values anywhere in the face that it's going to recede around the eyes, around the edges of the face, um, at the bottom of the nose, right under the lip, the neck. So that's going to be my darker areas. And then I bring in lighter paint to highlight the raised areas, which is our noses, our cheekbones, chin, anything, that's, <clears throat> excuse me, anything that's raised and going to catch the light. So I go back in with a little lighter. So I just keep going over and over until I like what I have, adding a little bit darker some places and blending it in just to get a little bit more contrast between the light and the dark areas. So sometimes when I do a collaged background like you see here, I will oftentimes go over it with a couple of different colors of paint or gesso 
or something just kind of watered down to mute it. I don't do that on this page. I go ahead and keep those differing papers visible in their true identity. <laughs> I don't really cover anything up. I decided that's what I wanted for this page. I wanted to see how I like that instead of making everything just blend into the background. I wanted that um, that energy that keeping the papers in their original form gives to it. So now I'm working on her beautiful full lips. Uh, something as you get older you don't have as much anymore and you long for. So yeah, all my figures tend to have nice pretty full lips. <laughs> And I'm just going back and starting to do a little bit more of the detail work around her eyes and lips and nose. So I've got actually several journals going right now. Um, I have constructed a junk journal that I enjoy working in. Um, like I said, Robin McClendon turned me on to this particular type of journal. I almost didn't find it because I went all through Walmart looking and I kept finding journals, but not this one. And it may be different in your store, but this one showed up where they do um, on the aisle with the office supplies and the tapes and the mailing envelopes and that sort of thing. That's where I found it. Um, I believe it was either $2.99 or $3.99. It was less than $4. And it's got a lot of pages in it, and each page lays flat. So it's very easy to work in. So I think I'm going to enjoy it. I've got to get used to the thinness of the paper. It's not as thick as cardstock even. And like I said, I don't want, I like the color of the pages, so I don't want to um, put gesso on every page to, you know, get it ready for these wet mediums. So I just need to be careful about how much water I'm putting on it. And so I'll probably keep, I won't be doing watercolors, and I'll probably keep a dry brush technique for use with my acrylic paints. So I'm working on the eyes a little bit here, and then I'll start working on the hair. I keep a little basket, that little purple basket you see there, has my smallest bits of things so they won't get lost. If you see in the picture, my newest acquisition from the thrift store was this sorter that has, um, you can put files in it and it has smaller pockets to put things in and you can see it behind my book there. But some of my smallest little bits and pieces of paper, if I put them in there, they would just get lost and thrown down to the bottom. So I have kept my little basket there, and I'm trying to use out of it at every session uh, so that I can get those used up and out of there so I don't have so many baskets and you know buckets and stuff full of papers hanging around. So I'm trying to use my stash as much as I can. So here I decide that she just needs a rosier cheek, and so I get another brush, and I go in with a little bit darker shades of pink for that side of her face that's a little bit more shaded. And I start putting a little bit more definition into her eyes. And I think she is going to be light-haired, somewhere between silver and blonde. You'll have to use your imagination. <laughs> she ends up kind of looking like a California girl or something. Um, but I just play as I go. I don't always know what she's going to look like in the end. Um, but that's how, that's how I learn. How I learn to do faces is doing faces. Um, and I enjoy doing them. I like doing them with different looks, different expressions, different colorings, different hair. And so just play. If, if you're someone that is not comfortable yet doing faces, there's no way to get comfortable without doing a lot of faces. That's all I can tell you. So you can't get out your sketch pad three times a year and expect to get better at it. Just sit down every day you can for just a few minutes, either with a pencil um, I like a pencil and a blending stump sometimes, and that's all I'll do faces with. And I'll I'll put my, you know, uh, my eyes and my lips and my noses and everything in there. And then I'll use my blending stump to put in the shading on the face. Look at YouTube videos just on sketching faces. Learn how to map out a face, where the eyes go. Most people, when they start doing faces, they put the eyes too far to the top of the head. And if you draw an oval... The eyes are going to go right along, if you cross that oval right through the middle, from top to bottom, right along the middle is where your eyes are going to be going. So watch some, and I might even put out a, a very beginning face video just for sketching to help people get, because there's a lot of us that we want to draw faces and we do a couple of them and they just look crazy. Well, they're going to in the beginning. <laughs> 
So just be patient with yourself and remember to have fun. That's what I like about art journaling is you don't have to show it to anybody. Uh, it's not going to be sold. It's not going to go on exhibition. It's for you. And it's where you learn. It's where you practice. It's where you just sit and let some things out of your mind and flow onto a piece of paper. And I find it totally relaxing. So I go in, put in a lot of um, white, actually, in her hair. And a little bit of highlight with some pearlescent type paint, but mostly this is just white gesso. Pencil lines, I go back in and add more pencil lines as I go with it. I have a little fine liner paintbrush here um, because I want to be able to get the small little hairs that are flying around. Sometimes I'll do just kind of a cartoon pop art looking look of hair. No individual hair strands, just a solid, you know, bouffant type <laughs> hairdo. But most times I like to see the, uh, the energy, the flow of the hair. So I like to use a fine liner to get some wispies around, you know, her face and to make it look like it's moving. I go back in here and add some more collage material. I have some stamps that have butterflies on them and bits of paper that I want to bring in just a little bit more color to the page. So I add that down here at the bottom. And I'm getting really close to getting to where I like what I see. And it's a very pretty quick journal page. I don't think I spent more than about an hour on this from start to finish. And uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. That helps me rank. And people can find me in searches and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.